digitalization have been the buzzwords during this COVID-19 pandemic, but in a rush to suddenly shift gears, how big of a concern will security actually be? Well, here to share his insights, we have with us Praveen Kumar. He's the General Manager for Asia Pacific at ASG Technologies. Good morning, pra uh, Praveen, and thank you so much for joining us all the way from Singapore. Hi, Danny. Thanks a lot for having me on the show. Praveen, I had hosted um, PLDT's Tech Talk earlier on, and this was actually a question that I had on, on data privacy because everyone had been pushing you know, for the new normal, for a disruptive change right now towards digitalization. Has the issue of security been swept under the rug amid all of this, this rush to, to upscale and to, to make some changes? Are the companies right now doing what it takes to keep a maximum level of security? Well, security has been one of the key drivers when uh, people wanted to invest. They had, that's also been a constraint in terms of how much money can I put in if there is a security issue. Data privacy has been a bigger issue that people have been more concerned in terms of what content gets shared, etc. Philippines over the past few years in terms of investments around data privacy as well as data security has been lagging around the ASEAN five development countries because of digital transformation. So because of a lot of companies being in the MSME space, the digital transformation journey has been a little slow and that in turn has resulted in delays in data security and data privacy because unless you digitally transform yourself, the needs to have implementations of data security and data privacy has not been as much of a paramount importance. So yes, there has been a big push because of COVID where everybody wants to digitally transform and move in that direction. And security has been one of the key drivers in ensuring that while you're getting digitally transformed, you don't lose transactions or content. But data privacy has mm. taken a little bit of a back foot, which needs okay. to be back, brought back as soon as COVID comes back. Okay, how much should companies suddenly start investing? Because we, we're so, we're in the thick of things and it's very difficult to see how it's going to be in the future. Can you already say at this point in time, okay, everyone suddenly needs to shift gears. You need to start re-diverting funds for investments more into things like data management, data privacy, data security. And how, how can companies decide this? Well, the Philippines, at least from the banking perspective or a financial perspective, the Bank of Central has made sure data privacy is a key thing that most banks should be focused on. So they ensured that each bank or each insurance company should have a data officer who's nominated and who's also kept in the bank who takes care of data security, data privacy and uh, related concerns. So from an uh, investment perspective, from the government push perspective, there has been a drive, at least in the financial sector. In the non-financial sector, the digital transformation journey is so behind that if you ask a company to start in investing in data privacy and data security before they digitally transform, you would not find the interest. Because as of now, because of COVID, even if we assume that by end of second quarter, Philippines comes out of COVID and most of the other world economies come out of COVID, we expect Philippines to have losses of almost 260 billion pesos. And if it goes on to the third quarter, you might have in excess of a trillion pesos. So the first thing that every business is thinking about is, can I digitally transform? Like take your industry, for example, today you're able to broadcast sitting at home, something that people could never think of in the earlier days. Today in Philippines itself, there are a lot of BPOs where there are restricted centers where you're supposed to be operating in for right. customers who are based outside. Now, yeah. because of travel constraints, people are forced to work from home. Same thing happening in India and other countries. So what's happening is a new normal is taking place where remote work from home, securing the environment, ensuring data, even though it's from outside uh, a particular secure environment. How can you secure that? How can you ensure that data doesn't get leaked out? Is a concern that every company who is already digitally transformed is thinking about. So from a financial sector, I think there is a push. GDPR being globally being driven as well as Philippines and most countries trying to push for privacy. However, is that going to be the new normal moving forward? Uh, that's a trend that we'll have to evolve and see because most companies are thinking in that direction.
Okay. Praveen, it's an interesting point that you made there because as I noticed that during the lockdown, um, a lot of banks, for instance, people still needed to report to their offices because particularly of the privacy issue. Is this something that cannot be circumvented? It's impossible to work from home 100%. I actually had on my show Thomson Reuters a BPO and they were 100% working from home. Is that a possibility? Um, and, and can you do that without compromising the privacy and the quality of the security? Whereas other banks, for instance, have had to have the people still uh, reporting on the back of this. Well, um, we, we support almost six of the top 10 banks in Philippines. And one of the requests that came across while COVID came in is that we were asked to nominate people who can come to the bank if needed, if there is a support requirement. In, and then we got that special letter that, okay, who are you nominating? You know, they can travel, et cetera. So your question being, can we all work from home instead of going to the office at that point of time, at least in the banking sector? I would say to a great extent because of the technology enhancements that we have and over the period of uh, in the near future as technology continues to evolve, this is not something we can ignore. This is a possibility that exists. However, will all banks try to enforce it and are they ready for it? I wouldn't say so. A lot of banks are in the digital transformation journey today. A lot of the backend applications cannot be managed sitting at home. So they would have to go physically to that particular environment. And this is an evolution that banks would tend to invest considering what's happened today and how the banks are forced to adapt and the volume of transactions that have gone up. People didn't expect that during such a scenario, you would have a peak in workloads. Workloads have gone up dramatically. We saw a press article from one of the banks in Philippines which said that 90% of the transactions that happened were cashless online, which means the systems, the backend infrastructure has to be capable of handling that at some point of time. And this is something people didn't expect. However, good news is most of the banks had prepared themselves for a larger capacity and hence could cater to it. However, that's one part of the story. The other part of the story is, can I do the other evolutions around fund transfers, around making sure transactions around treasury, et cetera, are all managed remotely without giving away privacy-related issues? That's something we will evolve. They will invest. And knowing the trend, this is bound to happen. OK, you mentioned that you are you know, uh, consulting for six out of 10 of the largest banks here. You, can you tell us, were they prepared? Uh, were, did they have the tools in place for something like this or did this, this, did this come as a, a major shock and was there very a lot of difficulty in terms of upskilling and changing and you know catering to this 90% now digital transactions? Um, th tell us your, your initial you know, sentiment on how the banks are coping with the new normal. Well, this was indeed surprising. You know, we sitting in the back end have limited knowledge to the entire application landscape of a bank. We do have some knowledge in terms of how they do data, etc. But the banks are pretty particular in securing what they have and not divulge everything to every vendor that interacts with them. Most of the banks, I would say, if not all, did have the capacity to manage what the load, the load jump that happened. You know, the spike that happened. I would say it's a combination of things that helped them. One is the footfalls, which happens at the branches, just went down. So it went from 100 to zero. And the footfalls on the online went from zero to 100. So effectively, if you look at how the banks have to balance what they have to do, the volume of transactions online went up. But the total number of transactions in terms of the breadth that is there, which you can do at a branch, like cash deposits, like mm -hmm. making sure cash withdrawals in the branch, dramatically didn't go up as much. So I would, I would say most of the banks had thought about capacities and how to manage the applications moving in. And I, I would say that all of the banks are continuously engaged in fulfilling some of the gaps that they have. Uh, the digital okay. transformation initiative by the Bank of Central enforced all banks to make sure they're digitally enabled in the next three months or six months. And they are investing. They're talking to vendors like us, calling us mm. in remotely, doing, doing workshops with their teams, even though their teams are home, and getting that delivery done. So they were not only in Philippines, but in the region. Most banks were equipped to handle this 
which we didn't know whether they were or not. Okay, good to know. Now, Praveen, I've actually sat down with several, you know, of these big banks actually way before the crisis and, and talked about their digitalization strategies. But there was a very mixed uh, picture um, in terms of, you know, some that's really their strategy to go all digital even. Uh, some banks are, you know, Union Bank, for example, has been very vocal about the fact that they don't want to be a bank. They want to be a technology company with financial services, you know, so whereas others have said, no, we are continuing with a brick and mortar approach. And that is our strategy. We don't need to be a, a fintech company. What is the future uh, of banking right now? Is everyone going to have to now, you know, think less and, and shift their resources from brick and mortar, from these sort of uh, traditional face-to-face -face services in a country that is still, as you mentioned, you know, very cash is king sort of country. Is this period in the pandemic enough for the culture to catch up and enough for the, the you know, banks to, to do a turnaround? History has shown that humans tend to forget too soon, right? So otherwise, a lot of things would not get repeated in life. And, and that's history. It's got nothing to do with Philippines <laughs> to me or anybody telling it. So yes, this pandemic must have ensured we invest more in healthcare, banks invest more in digital transformation, governments invest more in enforcing data privacy, data security and uh, regulations, et cetera. How things would happen in the future is very difficult for us to predict. However, what I can tell you today is at least three of the top six banks are talking to us for digital transformation as some of their core applications which were not mobile enabled, which were not able, mm -hmm. which were not provided for their employees to work on. These are initiatives they've started during the during these two months. It's not something that they started earlier. They're also starting on their data privacy journey, where they're trying to ensure data that is brought in is is more secure. You can trace data back end to end while you're collecting the documents. Also, some of the banks have started account openings online which is very interesting. They're saying, can we try processes for customers who already have accounts with us in some form to expand their footprint without having them collect physical documents, get it officially verified, et cetera. So evolution is happening. Whether that would sustain is something time would tell. That's it. Without being digitally transformed, surviving five years hence is going to be absolutely impossible. It's, it's not. So you would have to invest in brick mortar, but you'd have to do other stuff. Okay, so final question. Um, given our technological limitations, um, it, it's an archipelago. A lot are saying it's, it's more difficult here in the Philippines than it is in some countries, for example. What's your take on that in our culture as well? And also, you know, one issue, the BSP has been very instrumental. You're right. They've done so much in terms of regulatory issues, but there's still the issue that we don't have a national ID system. It's very hard to keep track of, of people and opening accounts and, and that poses a risk as well for banks and, and they're, you know, especially now not non-performing loans in this sort of period. What trends are you seeing that are the most important going forward? Um, and what's your, your outlook on the industry? What are the tools that need to be upskilled? So banks, banks cannot define how humans tend to behave or interact with them. The environment defines that. So if more of the environment says, I want to go digital, the banks would have to go digital. The banks can't say I'm digital while the economy says, I want to go physical and brick and mortar. What they've noticed is COVID has forced a lot of people to go digital. People who did not want to do it are forced to do it. They've learned it. And they've also started understanding the cost benefits of it. So traffic, as an example, I was speaking to a couple of MSMEs in Philippines, and they said, the amount of time and money they spend in asking people to come to office and the cost involved with it is far more economical if I allow them to work from home, as an example, and make it more digital. And if I give them the facilities for that. So banks would be trending towards that because the whole economy and human culture would become more digital and more uh, remote working, so to say, which will allow them to work and bank from home instead of going physical. So that is a trend that's going to happen because of the economy driving it. And banks would tend to adapt with it. Skills doesn't seem to be an issue. 64% of internet penetration, mobile penetration is very high in Philippines. It's just that we haven't accepted the fact that we could do cashless a lot more. That's going to change over the next few years and months.
Okay, so we are having to accept the new normal. <laughs> yes, right? yes, yes. In our faces here. And thank you so much for those insights. That was Mr. Praveen Kumar of ASG Technologies. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Have a good day.